Yeah. Oh, him.
Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. All glory, all honor belongs yes. to him. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Faithful, reliable, trustworthy. Yes, God. Ever true to his word of promise that can always be depended on. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. You are faithful, God.
glorify your name. We praise you. We praise you, Lord. God is good. God. Praise God. Glory to God. And he's good all the time. Yes, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. We praise him yes. for his faithfulness. Yes. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Nobody like him. Nobody like you, God. Nobody like you. Often imitated but never duplicated. One of a kind, God. My God. My <laughs> God. Alpha and Omega beginning and the end, the first Amen. and the last.
Sound like he good. Sound like he good. Sound like he good. Hallelujah. Show you right. And it keeps on, and it keeps on, 
cut that out. You act like he's moving on you or something. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is good. And he's moving. Moving all in my hand. I got ants in my pants and I need to dance. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, all right. Here she is, Sister Ann. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Come on, come on. Let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. Don't you feel the Holy Ghost moving in this place? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can't you feel him moving? Woo, he keep on moving in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whatever you need this morning, the Holy Ghost is here. Glory to God. Come on, let's move with him. Let's move it. He's just Hallelujah. moving. Come on, come on. Moving. <laughs> Hallelujah. But earnest, but earnest, he's moving. <laughs> woo -hoo -hoo. Glory to God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Oh, what a wonderful song. Praise God. It's one I owe one, but praise God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Praise Hallelujah. God. I need the Holy Ghost to guide me, to Hallelujah. lead me. When I need to make a decision, I seek the Holy Ghost. He's our helper. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's there to help us. Glory to God. Well, praise God. I want you in the building to help me welcome our internet audience. Come on. Let's give them a BLCC welcome this morning. Hallelujah. Woo! Good to have you. Welcome. Glory to God. Welcome, welcome, welcome to praise our God, service. Praise God. praise God. We're so glad you tuned in. We're so glad. Praise God. You will never be the same. Hallelujah. As you can see here, we just all wound up. Praise God. Because the Holy Ghost is moving in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in TV land, he's moving there too. We want to say thank you for viewing us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll never be the same. As always, we have a saying, if you watch that program, you'll never be the same. You'll never be the same this morning. So we want to say thank you again for viewing us. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost, y'all. Glory to God. Mama, Mama Audra, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And get all in your knees. Glory, glory, <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. She's lifting them up. Hallelujah. Well, <laughs> praise God. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sometimes we come here with stuff and we just shake it off this morning. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is here to destroy every yoke. Whatever you got going on, the Holy Ghost is here to, to destroy it. The Holy Ghost can handle it. Praise God. Glory to God. Well, praise God. Lift your hands all over the building. Ooh, glory to God. Something good is going to happen to you today. Do you receive that? Do you really receive that? Do you really, really? Come on, let's give God some praise. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, you may be seated. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God for moving service. Glory to God. God is not dead. He's yet alive. Praise Hallelujah. God. That's why I'm just, Pastor and I just give him everything. The choir just give him everything. Hallelujah. Yeah. We just let it all hang out. We yeah. give God all, all, all. Praise God. Praise well, praise God. God. These are our announcements. Children's ministry, you will resume classes for the fall semester beginning August 14th. Sunday, August 14th, during the morning service. Praise God. Parents, if you have students between the ages of 3 to 20 years old and they are not actively a part of our youth ministry, we invite them to become a part of our youth group. Praise God. You can see Sister Diane Harris, praise God, for the ages 3 to 12. And you can see Brother Michael Willrich for the ages 13 to 20. Praise God. Praise God. The purpose. Hallelujah. Praise God for Hallelujah. our ministry, our youth ministry. Praise God. The purpose of our children and teens ministry is to develop discipline in the lives of our children. Develop a significant prayer life and to help them build a solid, solid foundation with God. It's an extension of the home. Praise God. We welcome this opportunity and look forward to meeting with you and your youth. This comes from our 
youth department. Praise God. Thank God for our youth department. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's growing, it's growing, it's growing. Hallelujah. Well, it's celebration time. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. BLCC family and friends, it's time to celebrate with our past and family for 30 years of faithful service. Praise God. This special celebration marks our 30th annual Founders Day and time of fellowship. The celebration will take place at the beautiful South Shore Harbor Resort. Praise God. And it is beautiful. They renovated it. It is beautiful. Yeah. Praise God. And this will take place on Friday, September 16th. Friday, September 16th at 7.30 p.m. Praise God. We're looking forward to everyone's participation at this year's Pastor's Appreciation Service. It's, it is an honor to have Pastor Douglas as our leader. And it is a privilege to bless him with our monetary gifts of love, our presence, and our involvement during this celebration. Praise God. Envelopes for our Pastor's Appreciation Day celebration are located at the front entrance of the church on the Todd boxes. Or you can get one from our urchers or our greeters. Praise God. They're holding them up. Praise God. Praise God. The Founders Day tickets may be purchased from Sister Ashley Douglas. Glory to God. And ticket prices are 0 to 4 is free. 5 to 12 is $20. And 13 to adult is $50. Praise God. Room accommodations, including tax. Room accommodations, praise God, is $122.08 for two to four in a room. This is a flat rate, $122.08. For room reservations, you can call the hotel direct, praise God. That number is 281-334-1000. 281-334-1000. Three three four one thousand, and you can ask for the VLCC block. That's two eight one three three four one thousand, and ask for the VLCC block. You got to ask for it. Rooms must be reserved by August fifteenth. August fifteenth. That's the deadline date to get that block to get this room rate, because it's gonna be more if you don't get this block. Praise God. Complimentary breakfast coupon or not are not a part of this package. Hallelujah. We used to get that. It was wonderful. But praise God, it's not it anymore. Changed. The buffet breakfast is $12.95, $12.95 in the Paradise Reef Restaurant. Praise God. The deadline, what's the deadline date again? August? August 15th. Praise God. Praise God. What's that room rate? One twenty-two oh eight for two to four in a room. Praise God. And that number to call is two eight one three three four one thousand. Very good. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So we are looking forward to having a wonderful time. We're so excited about what God is going to do. Get your rooms. You want to stay in some of these? Oh, these rooms are beautiful. Get your room, save up your money, get your room, but get your tickets first now. Yeah. Get your <laughs> tickets first, praise God. Come on, get your tickets, get your tickets, praise God. I want to remind you, you can make a contribution before <laughs> and after service with your debit or your credit card in our bookstore. Also, you can give on your smartphone or your tablet by downloading the Givelify app. And from your app, you can follow the directions and you can also get your banquet tickets on Givelify. Praise God. So get your tickets, get your tickets, get your tickets. Praise God. I want to remind you of the, the list of the base interfaith caring needs is posted in the bookstore as well as the fellowship hall. And as always, Pastor, and I would like to thank you for being a blessing in need to those in need. Praise God. You never know when we're in need. So thank you for being a blessing. It is a blessing. They love the CVLCC coming. When they say CVLCC coming, they know they have got a truckload of stuff. So we just want to say thank you for helping those in need. Praise God. Our regular scheduled services here at the church. Sunday school is at 9 a.m. Our morning worship is at 10 a.m. Every second and fourth Sunday beginning August the 14th. Praise God. Yes, August the 14th is our children's ministry. 
Our teens ministry is it's also on Tuesday. We'll begin in August again, praise God. And our midweek service is Tuesday at 7 p.m. Thursday, we have a noonday class. And Friday at 6 p.m., as I always say, is the most important meeting of the week, which is prayer. Well, praise God. That ends our announcements right now. We'd like to meet, greet, and welcome any first-time visitors. If we have any first-time visitors, would you please stand to be recognized? All of our first-time visitors. Well, praise God. No first-time visitors. Well, praise God. But you're here. Praise God. We thank God. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. We thank God that you are here. We are excited about what Jesus is doing. We are excited about what God is doing. We're excited about the Word of God. Pastor has been teaching us the Word of God. And if you just continue to stand on that Word of God, find your promise in the Word of God and stand on the Word of God. Don't give up. Don't give in. What Pastor said last Sunday. Was it last Sunday too? Last Sunday. Last Sunday, good. Get a what? Get a grip and don't let go. Hold on for dear life. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. More is to come, Pastor. I know he's got a word from God for us today. Are you expecting a word from God? I'm expecting a word from God. Come on, everybody. Stand to your feet. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Put your hands together. Come on. Let's receive our pastor, Pastor Douglas. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And for all you students that flunked that test, <laughs> it is don't quit, maintain your grip. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why my job is safe. Praise God. It is good to be here. God is awesome. Um, he's beyond description because what he does for us in our lives, we don't have words for. Uh, and the awesome part about it is that he's our daddy, papa, our father. He's, we're his children, blood bought children with the same DNA. As Almighty God. That's why the devil hates our guts. Because every time he look at us, we, we remind him of God. And you know what happened when he tried to get a little up and he got kicked out. Praise God. And then the Bible said we're to keep him on our feet. Just keep the pressure on his head. Rub your heel in his head. Glory to God. Mash him. Praise God. Smash him. Hallelujah. Cut him with the word. Hallelujah. And so we have a word from the Lord today that I believe is going to help us tremendously. We've been studying about miracles and we began on Sunday. We talked about don't quit, maintain your grip and don't slip. Hallelujah. Because the enemy's job is to try to make you think it's not going to happen. And you don't fall for the rope of dope. It's a, it's a trick. God can't lie. And then we talked about on Tuesday night, we talked about the fact that God is faithful to himself. God has faith in himself. And he's faithful to himself. So God has never had a failure. And he's not about to start now. So we hooked up to a God that don't know how to lose. If you hang around today just long enough for me to get this word out, uh, you're going to be helped. You that watch my internet, it's good to have you. Praise God. You did yourself a favor. And the word you're going to hear today is going to enhance your life. And we're going to pause a minute and just greet each other. And we'll come back and pray and get into the word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. His glory.
supernatural. Show me your glory. Show me, Lord, be there. Show me your glory. It's time. Show me your glory. It's time. Show me your glory. Praise the Lord. And let the church say, Amen. Praise him. Y'all see a little short? Well, I got a bunch of short ladies in here. <laughs> Praise him. <laughs> Praise God for hereditary DNA. Praise God. Father, it is so wonderful to be in your presence. Lord, your desire is that always your children can laugh and talk and have fun and enjoy life, oh God. That life is not a burden and a struggle. It's just good to be here, oh God. Thank you, Father. You make all things good. You make things easy for us, oh God. But when we cast the care on you, you know how to handle it, oh God. Thank you for the privilege, oh God, today to, to hear you speak. We know you have a word for this house today, oh God. Lord, you set us up. You had this moment planned before there was even a world. Eons upon eons ago, you decided we need to be here today to hear this word. And so we are expecting to hear you speak to us individually as well as collectively, oh God. Thank you, Father, I deliver heart that here's a heart of good soil. And the word that is spoken today will not fall to the ground unfulfilled, but it shall yield much fruit in the lives and hearts of these, your people. And we'll leave this place not challenged, but changed in your presence. Holy Spirit, always I stand before you as a barefooted priest. Whatever you want to say on today, I will quote heaven. I will say exactly what you want me to say. All I ask you to do one thing, what you promise, confirm your word. And Lord, make thyself known in this house today by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Holy Child, Jesus. And we're going to praise in advance for everything we'll see right now by your spirit. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Like I said before, we, on Sunday we dealt with to a degree about, you know, don't quit. Uh, maintain your grip and don't slip. Because the enemy would like to make you think God's not coming through. And that's why I've been saying for a season now, your faith must have faithfulness. If you're going to see the end of your faith, your faith must have faithfulness. Your faith must have what? If your faith has no faithfulness, you will quit. Especially when God don't show up at the time you've already preordained for him to manifest. And I want to make this very clear today by the help of the Holy Spirit. That the scripture does not say we can decide when God does it. The scripture does say we can decide if he does it. 
The scripture does not say we can decide when God does the manifestation. The scripture does say, or do say, that we can decide if he does it. And that's because of our faith. Our faith determines if God does it for us. The when is his department. So you need faithfulness to hang in there until he manifests. We talk about people who, who have a burst of faith. Well, they start out, bless God, himself took all my needs are met, and we're good for about a week or two or maybe a month, maybe two months, and then we start, well, I thought by now he would have, uh, I know I got faith. Your, your having faith is not the only issue. Your faith must have faithfulness. See, many times God, God will check us to see can we still trust him if he miss our deadline? Ever had God miss your deadlines? That's because you said it, not him. The Bible says our job is to believe, right? He told that man when they come and told him that, that don't bother Jesus anymore, your, your, your a servant is dead. He said, Jesus turned around him and told him only believe. He, Hebrews eleven six 6 said, for without faith, it is what? Impossible to please God. So faith is critical to receiving from God and pleasing God. And faith without faithfulness is not biblical faith. Abraham had to believe God for 25 years. Oh, it got quiet then. Well, Pastor, I kind of expected mine to come a little earlier than 25. Everybody's destination, everybody's journey is different. Stop comparing to other people. You're going to move God by your faith, not by theirs. You're going to move God by your faith. Every tub had to sit on, what, on his own bottom. There's a time you can get it by proxy or God just decided to work a miracle because people are praying. But there comes a time when you're going to have to learn how to walk without a walker. Without training wheels. Hello, somebody. You got to learn how to stand on your faith for God to move for you on your own. And when you first get saved, your faith works quick. But later on, it don't work so quick. Then you start wondering, what's wrong with my faith? There's nothing wrong with your faith. It's God stretching you. Tell your neighbor, it's God stretching you. God wants your faith to develop to a certain level whereby whatever you speak to will obey you. Every time. Immediately. But he got to stretch you because if he don't stretch you, you'll stay in that same little spot and just be happy there. God said, no, no, no. I got greater plans for you than the ones you have for yourself. Lord have mercy. I know the plans I have for you. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, right? 29. I know the plans I have for you. See, God had plans for you that he hadn't given you all the details yet. And some of those and some of those events in that plan requires a certain level of faith. And God knows what that level is. And so you got to be willing to be patient with God and go along with God as he stretches you and keep going with him. And, and then you can say, you know what, praise God, I can believe God for that now. I'm past the headache. I'm on the big and better things now. So God stretches us, but our faith must have what? Faithfulness. I got to drive that home because the scripture does not say we can decide when God does it. But it does say we can decide if he does it. If we'll continue to walk in faith. Yes. Peter.
Peter did real good when he first hit that water walking. But it didn't last. He started out in faith, but he wasn't faithful to his faith when the circumstances changed. And trust me, the devil know how to make your circumstances change. And you have to be committed to who you believe it in. Second Timothy chapter two. By the way. Yeah. That's my daddy, you know. And uh, we kind of got a thing going on. Uh, look at that 13th verse. If we believe not, if we believe not, or be what? Faithless or untrue, and one translation says unfaithful. When you're not walking in faith, you're unfaithful to God. You're unfaithful to his word. You're basically calling God a lie. I like to bring it on home where it can register. Because to not believe me what? I don't believe me what? He lying. Hello, somebody? If you don't believe me when I tell you that I did something, you, you're basically saying you lying to me. How many times we've been saying, oh, no. You lying. And you pull that on God, and God don't go for it. You know, know, know what the Bible says? The Bible says, you don't have to swear. He said, let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay. Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. He said, anything other than that, it leads to sin. In, 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 in other words, your word ought to be so that when you say yes, nobody have to have you raise your hand and swear. That you're not lying. Hello, somebody. I'll do that many times. I just won't, I, I just won't say anything else. I said, when I answer it, I will answer it again. Really? What I, what I say? Because then you are saying, are you lying? Are you telling the truth? See, that's a question about my integrity. I got a problem with that. Because I have no reason to lie to you. But, we, but we've been trained in a world system that, that requires triplicates of signatures and, and uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, what they, when you get somebody to put the stamp on there and notarize just to validate somebody's word. A Christian should need all that. Just on his word alone. I will do that, okay? So, that's it. Final answer. Amen. And then you go on make plans based on that. I will do this. Now, if they don't come through, then you know next time to have some questions about that word. But of all people to not question is God. He said, if you don't believe, if you're unfaithful, if you're untrue, if you are faithless, yet God, he abides. He abides what? Faithful. He abides what? Faithful. People, people got, here's the thing. I've been meditating this for a while, and it just blesses me every, every, every time I think about it. Uh, that my daddy, God is my daddy, that's my. My daddy, I'm his son. Every time I talk about my, my shoulders square because I'm a son of God. I am a son of God. I am a son of the creator, designer, architect, builder, master planner. I am a son of the sovereign God, omnipotent. Omniscient, omnipresent one, all sufficient one, El Shaddai, Jehovah God, Yahweh Elohim, Madden, I'm his son. I own everything God owns. 
Hallelujah. Boy, when you talk like that, you, you, you don't even feel like Gooch. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, get, get rid of that. You are born what? Again. That's a rebirth. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. So though your mom and them got you here, you in another family now with a different DNA and a whole new background and a whole new backing. Now God is backing you, not your mom and them. God is your source now, not your mom and them. Am I helping anybody up in here? When I was with my mother and them, I was limited. But when God became my father, all limits were off. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, glory, that God empowers me, enables me. There is nothing I can't do. If thou canst believe, Mark 9, 23, all things are what? possible to him what that believe I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me glory to God there are no impossibilities with God God can do anything you say you still talk about it bold I'm talking word I am who God says I am I can do what God says I can do I have what God says I have. I'm a world shaker and a history maker. I'm a success and nothing less. When God made me, he made the best. I'm a dominator. Not an imitator. I'm the head and not the tail. Above what? Only and not beneath. I tread on serpents and scorpions. I walk on the devil's head. I bust up the darkness, the kingdom of darkness. With the word of God. God is for me. Lord have mercy. God is for me. You know, you know I'm just preaching myself happy. Y'all you, you can get in on it when you feel like it. But, but I'm having a ball over here, glory to God. See, every time you drive this direction, you make the devil nervous. Because, see, what I got on me and what I'm talking is contagious. All of a sudden, you start walking out of here talking about I'm the head, not the tail. Bub on up. I'm the victim, not the victim. I can do all things through Christ. I'm highly favored of God. I'm blessed of God, highly favored. All things are mine. Glory to God. It's contagious. You are who you hang out with. That's why people can tell you, you, you've been to VLCC. You've been around Pastor Douglas, haven't you? Uh-huh. Yeah. That's a good thing. I mean, think about how you were when you first came here. <laughs> and look at you now. You talking about you young and up. You hadn't, you hadn't said that be, before you got here. How about you young and up? Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah, every day. But I got all this from this right here, the book, God's Word. So when I believe what he says, see, God believes in himself. If you believe not, yet he about is what? Faithful. He cannot deny himself. He cannot deny himself. He can what? Not deny himself. Let me help you. God has never had a failure thought. Because whatever he thinks and he speak it, it always happens. Every time. 
God have never missed it. God has never called for anything that didn't come to pass. That's why God can't joke. Because even his jokes come to pass. Lord have mercy. Let me tell you why. It's because of his power. We said we use the word un omnipotent. That's um, that's I'm not potent or all power or limitless power, power with no end. That power belongs to God. Now watch this now. Power, God's power is a person. I'm gonna say it again. God's power is a person. It's called the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Acts 1, they said, ye shall receive what? Power. But when? After what? That the what? The Holy Ghost is come upon you. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. And he is the performer and the confirmer of every word God ever spoke. He is the performer and the confirmer. Of every word God have ever spoken. God have never said nothing that didn't come to pass. Because the Holy Ghost, who is the unlimited power of God, sees to it every God, every word God ever speaks comes to pass. I got news for you. The same Holy Spirit. That performs and confirms for God lives on the inside of us. Romans 8 said, The same Spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. Lord, have mercy. Oh, think about that for a minute. This power in the person of the Holy Spirit in you raised up the son of God from the dead. You think you got some challenges going on? You got more than enough power in you. Lord have mercy. If the Holy Ghost can raise a dead person, what do you have going on? That's so gigantuous. That can't be handled by the Holy Ghost. Since the Holy Spirit can raise people from the dead. Surely he can meet your needs. Surely. Surely. He'll meet your needs. Ephesians 3.20 says what? Now unto him, that's what? Able to do exceeding abundantly above what all that we can ask or think. How? According to the power that worketh where? In us. Who is the power? The Holy Ghost. Where does he live? Now he says, beyond your wildest thought, you still hadn't put no pressure on the power. You have me made him nervous with your request. The reason is because the Holy Spirit is the creator of all things. God spoke it, but the Holy Spirit performed it. When God said, let there be light, the Holy Ghost turned the switch on. In the book of Luke chapter 1. Gabriel came to Mary six months after e e Elizabeth had a miraculous conception uh, with her husband. And she was, the Bible says she was old and called barren. But when God got involved, impossibilities went out, out the window. All things become possible when God shows up on the scene. All things become possible when God shows up on the scene. Remember what we said? Miracles transcend time, distance, and matter. It don't matter 
when the Holy Ghost shows up on the scene. It tr the power of God transcends time, distance, and matter. It doesn't matter. No matter about time, no, no matter about distance, the Holy Ghost is not limited by this natural realm. The spirit world is really the real world. Lord have mercy. The spirit world is really the real world. What you're living in is a copy. The spirit world is more real than the natural world. Because the spirit world made the natural world. God is a spirit. Spirit made natural things. Spirit made natural things. Spirit made natural things. That's why when, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you want to change things in the natural, you go to the realm of the spirit. Some of you don't frustrate yourself trying, trying, trying to change somebody in this natural realm. You, 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 you going to the wrong, wrong source. You got to go up. The heart of the king is in the hand of God. It is God that put desire and ability in a man's heart to change. You don't frustrate yourself just fussing the per talking person and threatening the person going on. C come on, you're, you're, you're in the wrong direction. Let's go to the one that made them. Because the creator has authority over the created. Lord have mercy. The creator has authority over the created. Why do you have manuals in your cars? Because the mind of the creator is in that manual. You might have driven a car before, but not that car. And you might assume you know how to operate it, but this, this man's mind may have some other features that the last car you owned didn't have. And unless you access his mind, you can't benefit from those features. And that the, the, the man that made it know how to fix it. That's why when you get your car, you take it back to the dealership unless you want to just take a chance and go to a shade tree mechanic. But nowadays, it's, it's even hard to take it to a shade tree, tree mechanic because everything now is electronic and computerized. You got a brain in that, in that, in that car now that controls everything. Until now, they got cars that drive themselves. Now, they're still kind of dangerous because this, this one car turned right into the path of 18 wheel and killed that man instantly. So before you turn your control over to a machine, let's let them get the kinks out first. <laughs> they were showing video of someone was, on the, someone was sitting on the other side of the car while the car was driving itself. Some were playing cards. The Bible said, the Bible said, put no trust in man. You need to be on that driver's side on the steering wheel with your foot on the ready. Just in case that computer get a glitch. You don't need to be in the back seat. <laughs> but that's how advanced technology is now, where they have come to a place where now they can, they can actually let a car drive itself. You can't take those to a shade tree mechanic. Hello? Because the the mind of the creator knows what it takes to fix it. Well, God is our creator. He knows how to fix anybody and anything. See, we've been going the wrong direction. We've been going horizontal, and we need to be going vertical. God, I married him, but you made him. <laughs> 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 
Hello? God, I married her, but you made her. Let's keep this equal. Because trust me, it is not always the man. About 99% of the time is the female. <laughs> but a rum, a rum rose up in the house, did it? No! It's this man you gave me, Lord. But, but how you treating that man? Oh, Lord. Move right along. <laughs> the creator knows how to fix what he created, is what I'm trying to say here. Since God created us, he knows how to fix us. Now, here's, he said here, he said here, yet, he abides faithful because he cannot deny himself. The reason why he can't deny himself is because he can't fail. And God has never lied because he can't lie because every word he speaks comes to pass. Lord have mercy. He can't lie because every word he speaks comes to pass. God is true to himself. He's faithful to himself. Now he says, can I get you to be faithful to me? There again, we, we must go back to this. My faith must, must have faithfulness. Remember, the scripture does not say we can decide when God moves. But it does say we can decide if God moves. And the key is, your faith must also have a thing called patience. Now, patience is not waiting with no hope. Patience is expectation of manifestation. Patience is expectation of manifestation. When, Pastor? As long as it takes. That's where faithfulness comes in. Because your faithfulness won't allow you to become discouraged in the meantime. Because you know you, your faith is in a God that cannot lie, will not deny himself, and have never had a failure. Never. Ever. Ever. Can I get you to run with me just a moment to uh, Isaiah 25? Somebody say God is good. God is good. Now you know you're prophesying, don't you? Watch this. Isaiah 25. I want to show, show you a verse here. I love the word. I hate the devil. Isaiah 25 and verse 1. O oh Lord, O oh God, O oh Lord, O oh God, O oh Lord, thou art my God. I will what? Exalt thee. I will praise thee. For thy what? What kind of things he's done? He hath done great things he has done great things he has done great things bless his holy name bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me, bless 
his holy name. Hallelujah. I just had to have a moment right there. He's a wonderful God. And he has done and is doing great things for us. See, God is for us. Hallelujah. God is for us. I, I, when, 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 when I hear people say, you know, God's good, I, I, I say, well, God is good to me. I can testify about me. God is good to me. Clover, that God, hallelujah. I can testify about that. He says this now. Uh, what else I bet? Wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are what? Lord have mercy. Since God was a God, the two things that stood out about God is the fact that he's faithful and he's true. You go to the book of, 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 of Revelation, it said when Jesus come back on the white horse, all this vesture shall be written the words faithful and true. God is not a man that he should lie. Nor a son of man he should repent. If he said it, glory to God. He will do it. Has he not spoken and will he not bring it to pass? Except from old time, old time, ancient of days, God has always been faithful and true. That's why it says in Hebrews 10, 23, he said, uh, let us hold fast to what? The profession or confession of our faith without waiting for he is what? Faithful, that promise. One, one, one scripture says, let, let God be true. And every man a liar. If you're going to believe anybody, believe God. He's never had a failure. But the key is, are you still believing today like you was believing day, day before yesterday? Because, so see what? Faith must have what? Faithfulness. If I'm, if, if I'm decreeing out of my mouth that himself took my infirmity and bore my sicknesses and by stripes I'm healed two weeks ago, I'm still decreeing the same thing right now. Because it's not a matter of if, if I keep believing, it's just a matter of when. And the when is not my department. The when is not my department. The when is not my department. My department is to believe. Because our faith is in a God that can't lie, that can't deny himself, that can't be unfaithful to himself. He got to be true to himself because that's who he is. Glory to God. Hallelujah. These counsels were from old faithfulness and truth. God is faithful. I've been saying that for years. I was saying that back when we didn't have enough money to, to pay all our bills. That was back in 1989. That was the first and the last time. My wife was doing the bills then, and she paid all she could, and there was still some, some left. So she turned to me and asked me, what are we going to do? I said, God is faithful. <laughs> well, for, for, for them, that's not a long enough sentence. Can you add to this? <laughs> If I could add to it, I would have put it on the table or in the bank. <laughs> so it kind of is what it is. We're just going to have to trust God's faithfulness. And rejoice anyhow. And praise him anyhow. While the bill collectors are calling, send your letters in the mail, threatening you. See, all this happened when I went into full-time ministry. My wife and I made a God, God a vow that, that uh, we were going to make him our source. So, so, so we vowed to give God a certain percentage of our income for the rest of our days. For the rest of our days, as long as we're breathing. 
when it was put to the test. Are you going to be, remain faithful to your vow to God? Or are you going to uh, bow out and, 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 and do other things other than what you promised God? Seek ye what? First. If you're going to do anybody first, you always do God first. Let me say it again. If you're going to do anybody, you do God first. Well, I catch God after I pay all this and take all this. I put some in the, in the save and, 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 and my 401k. All right. When you have a need, God, God going to go through all that, that same list of things. Well, let's see. I learned that a long time ago. You do God first. When I get my check and I'm, I, and I'm writing my check on purpose, I always write the tithe check first. First, do God first. He'll keep you first. God does what you do. We never reneged on our vow and our promise to God the whole year. We put up with the threats, things we told him this is all we got. <laughs> You can't get blood out of a turnip, bless God. So for a year, this went on. January the following year, 1990, I went to a conference in, in Houston at uh, St. Agnes. I'll never forget that. Pastor Morris Church at the time. And Brother Miles Monroe was there. Went to a workshop that evening about the 6 o'clock. He taught a message out of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through verse 3. He talked about order. Because the order tracks well. He talked about how that God brought order out of chaos. Because verse 1 was order, but verse 2 was chaos. But in verse 3, God starts saying, and God said, and God said, every time God said, something was brought to order. Then he started talking about organizing your drawers and your closets and your, your garages and all this, all this, all this, all this affects your, your wealth, your prosperity, your order. My wife didn't go with me that night. When I came home, I went to work. I started organizing my house, my drawers in my drawers. Socks, everything. Went to the, to the garage, organized the garage, everything. I went from, from, I went from front to back, organizing, organizing, bringing order, bringing order. In one month time, God brought every bill current. In one month. What I found out, I had made almost $20,000 less that year. Because when I went into full-time ministry, when I was on the job, I was making more. And then I could, if I wanted to, I could work overtime. So it didn't even dawn on me that that was a problem. Uh, I was just, I made a commitment to God. I was doing it. And when I went back and checked, the, when I got more time income taxes, I, I realized, oh, that's the, pro that's, 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 that's the problem right there. I had less income. But from that day to this, never again. God has been faithful to us. We've been faithful to him to honor God with what we promised God. That was 20% of our income all these years. But God always see to it that we always have. Our money never runs out. We might get low, but most show. Because when you honor God first, he'll keep you first. But order tracks well. When I, when I brought my house to order, and my house is still in order. You can go home with me right now. Our closets, I can go, to, go to our car. You, you're not going to find nothing on the floor but just an umbrella. In the back, that's it. The, the, the trunk is clean. The, the car is clean inside and out. It stays that way. I ain't got no hamburger wrappers. A French fry laying under, under the seat, under, under the floor mat. I'm not apologizing when somebody gets in the car and says, well, you know, uh, I, I got to clean this car, you know. <laughs> oh, don't shout me down. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Order attracts wealth. 
It shows God you respect and you appreciate what he's put in your stewardship. It shows God you respect and appreciate what he has put in your stewardship. He's not going to trust you with more if you're not taking care of what he's already given you. I don't care if you got a hoop to keep that hoop to clean. Keep your extra quarter all around and just put it in when it, when it needed and keep on driving. But make sure it's clean while you're driving. How do you think we got in the home we're in right now? Because we kept the home we was in in order. And God allows us to move from a 1,600 square foot house to a 5,000 square foot house. Because we kept that house in order. We were thankful and grateful. We go pray for other people, bless other people's homes. It was way larger than ours. But we was grateful for what we had in the meantime. And then we, we, we believe in God for what we wanted to be at. And God allowed it because we, we uh, kept that house in order. We drive the cars we like to drive because we, the one we had, we kept them in order. Order attracts wealth. We want God always pays the bills in this church because we keep this church in order. Anybody that's been around me here know it's got to be right. If I see clutter, I'm coming to you in a nice way. But I'm expecting some change. And not next week. Because it's affecting the finances of the ministry if, if I don't respect and take care of God's house and keep it in order. Am I helping anybody up, up in here? Yeah. Keep God first. Seek ye what? First. Watch this. What I sing you to? Nowhere? Go to Romans chapter, chapter 3. Romans 3. Let me uh, move a little further. I pray you're being helped. You don't have any reason not to trust God. If it was a man you put your trust in, then I have concerns. But this God that we serve and this God that I'm, that I'm talking about today can't deny himself, is faithful to himself, have never had a failure, have never lied, and always come through. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. We many times put mental dates on when God should do it. And that'll mess with your faith. You got to be resolved that I'm in this for as long as it takes. Because the one I got my faith in is not going to fail me. I am, I am going to have this. It's just a matter of time. Let me help you people out. Uh, uh, you go there, but let me, let, let me quote, quote them. I was in the book of Genesis chapter 30, 32, and I was there again because I keep going back to that passage because that, that, that passage blesses me where Jacob and that angel wrestled all night. And this man was committed to being blessed no matter what it took. Here's the key. And no matter how long. It took. See, we keep getting caught up in the fact that the Bible said that, that, that uh, he rests with him all night. No, the scripture says that uh, the angel decided daybreak was the time to leave. Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go, which meant if it went on to the next day, I'm still not releasing you. He was committed to however long it took, even with the angel trying to discourage him by putting his hip out of socket. And he said, I, I got to go. It's, it's about daybreak. He said, I don't care about being daybreak. I am not going to let you go until you bless me. And if it takes it all week, I'll still have my hands on you. That's why the Bible said in the book of Isaiah 62. Uh, verse 67, he says, uh, uh, I, I put watchmen on, on the walls, and they're not going to keep silent. 
and they're going to be they're going to be crying out day and night. They're not going to give me no rest. No rest. They're going to stay in my face. They're going to keep saying the same thing. See, people, here's what I, here's, 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 here's what I learned. God loved to hear his words in his ear. God loves to hear his words in his ear. See, see, see when it's his word, he can't deny it. When it's his word, he can't deny it. He has to what? Perform his word. Isaiah, I think it's 43 uh, and verse 26 says, put me in remembrance. God said, remind me of what I say. Come, let us plead together. Declare thou that thou may be justified. God said, tell me what I say. I want to hear what I say so I can be committed to what I said to you. Lord have mercy. When you stood on that word for whatever one you're standing on, for whatever miracle you need, God was healing, or your finance, whatever, it's not a matter of if. It's never a if when God already spoke it. It's never an if when God have already spoken it. It's just a matter of when. So since it's a matter of when, just stay in there until the end. Stay right there until you got it. Saying the same thing, believing the same thing, because it's not a if, it's a matter of when. That's what we're talking about. Relentless. That woman kept going back, kept going back, kept going back. Bless God, you're going to avenge me. You're going to avenge me. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, yes you are. She was committed. Faithfulness means commitment. I'm committed to walking in, in divine health. Whole body wholeness. Everything working. Perfection. I'm not going to sell for just one thing. Everything. It's what he paid for. It belongs to me. It's mine. It's not him that's saying I can't have it. He already said yes to it. So it's a matter of me believing it and staying with it until it manifests in me. I got a word for you. Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be to go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return void. But it shall come with a complete word and prosper anything whereunto I send it. I, this is one of my confessions. The word of God is prospering mightily in me now, bringing about an expected end. See, see when, you, when, when, when you walk in faith, you, you're not surprised when you get it. Faith owns it. Faith owns it before you see it. Faith owns it based on what he said. We don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. Faith owns it based on what he says. Since he can't lie, he can't change, he can't fail, and, 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 and it's not a chance, it, it won't happen. But if God, you can go and take that to, 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 to the bank and, 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 and be assured it's yours. The problem is the win factor. And those mental limitations we put on God, I, God, God I expect to have it by tomorrow. And then if it don't happen by, by next month, well, maybe the Lord didn't mean for me to have it. Well, now you're lying on, not lying on, on God. Because if you find it written, he did mean for you to have it. All the promises of God are in him, yea, and what? Amen. If you find it written in the word, it's yours. It belongs to you. It's a matter of you not taking your faith and possessing it. However long God takes to manifest it. We get weary. We get discouraged. And then we start comparing ourselves to others. That's not a good picture. People are not your gauge. 
God is. This is the word is. You're going to be judged by the word. Not by pooking them. By the word. By the word. And once you got a word on it, settle it. Final answer. Amen. Let that be me. That's a wrap. You learn to walk in the knowledge that I'm serving a God that I know can't lie to me. And I got this scripture for you. No good thing will I withhold from them who walk upright before me. No good thing will I withhold from me and you and you and you and you. God's not holding back nothing good for you. And God is what? Good. And James wants that every good and perfect gift. Yes. Glory to God. Comes from the Father of lights. Glory to God. In whom there is no verbalness nor shadow of change. God can't change his mind. That's James 1.17. Nothing good is he holding back from you. That's the dumb devil trying to tell you that foolishness. Block him out. Knock him out. Take that word like a hammer. And bust him upside of his head. That's Jeremiah 23, I think it is. And 29. He said the, the word is like five days. And the word is like a hammer. That, that, that breaketh the rock into pieces. Glory to our God. Hallelujah. So you take that word like a hammer and you start swinging that bad boy. And every time you, every time you swing it, see that problem, that circumstance, that condition being smashed into pieces. Glory to our God. Hallelujah. Can I help you again before I close? Because I sense my help coming on that, glory to God, hallelujah. I'm, 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 I'm just warming up now, glory to God. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. And without the Word was not anything made. That was made. That's John 1, verse 1, 2, 2 and 3. Without the word, wasn't nothing made. Without the word, there wasn't anything made. Well, get this. Up. So if nothing was made without the word, that means the word is master over everything. God's word. So then what I do is then is I take God's word, which is, 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 the, is the creator and the master and the ruler over all things, and I apply it against my situation, and my situation got to cow down to it and obey the word. My situation got to cow down to it and obey the word. What's in you too? Romans 3. And while you're going to Romans 3, let me say this. They say when you preach, you're doing about eight hours of work. Because it's, you, 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 you're actually giving yourself. You're pouring out of your spirit. And so you're giving yourself. Your, your life is being poured out when you minister the word of God. And so that's, that's why many times you, when, you, when you finish ministering and you come down, you realize how fatigued you are because you've been giving yourself to the people. See, if I preach anything else other than life, I left the Bible. Because the Bible is life. 
John 10, 10 says, I come that you might have what? Life and have it how? More abundantly. I'm talking about good living. How about every day? This is the day that the Lord has made. Now, watch down. Every good and perfect gift. So every day is a good day. Because God made it who is good. And everything he made in my day is going to be good. Even if a, a bad thing show up, by the end of the day it's going to work out in my favor. Like I was saying, when we went we in Florida and, uh, you know, Southwest had this glitch in this system and it affected everybody, including us. We missed our flight because the lines were so, so long. People had been there for two days. And my wife and I, like I was shared uh, before, my, 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 my wife and I just shut our mouth. Don't start speaking stuff on you that you don't want. We shut our mouth and just, you know, so. Herbert had to say, and, and he said, well, because you mentioned right now, we're going to put you on standby. Well, there's a whole bunch of folks standing by. <laughs> but we didn't say nothing because you're tempted to speak about the situation. But you got to be this one, this one just to shut your mouth and don't say nothing. Because since God is for you, He's working things out in your favor. Amen. Lord have mercy. So we missed the 9 o'clock flight. They had one leaving at 11. He had to go through St. Louis and then come back to Houston. And they were going to leave at 11, so we could get to Houston about 345. Well, we went up to that, that, that gate and uh, waited, and then they kept putting people on, kept putting people on, and didn't put us on. They said, well, your name and roll over to, 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 to the next one. Go down to gate number so-and-so. So here we go. Get ourselves going. Up. Got to the next, next, next gate. We ain't saying nothing. We got to that gate. They were low, but all of a sudden we heard Elizabeth Douglas, Wilson Douglas, shoom. We was quick, fast, and in a hurry. <laughs> now, this flight left at 12.30, but got into Houston at 1.30. So we shaved off over two hours by letting God work it out. But we didn't have to go through St. Louis. Then come to we got a straight flight. But see, if we had started complaining about we missed the one going to St. Louis. We might have been still sitting at the airport now. <laughs> I told y'all last time to learn how to shut up. You can block your blessing with too much conversation. God spoke this to me today. He said, son, he's a son. Make every word count. Every word you speak, make every word you speak count. What, 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 what that's doing? That's discipline my conversation. So now I, it's a whole lot of things I, I won't say. Because if I'm going to make every word count, I can't be saying that. So I speak to, I speak to my future. I speak to my manifestation. I speak towards that with my mouth. In, 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 uh, in, 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 in uh, Mark 11. I know it's just to, to Romans 3. Uh, but let's go to Mark 11. I'm just going to follow the leading of, of the Spirit here. Mark 11, Mark 11. Let's show you something. Let's show you something. Because you're in control of a lot of things that's going on with you. And, and, and it's not God's fault. 
A lot of stuff we blame it on God is us. A lot of stuff we, lot of stuff we, we blame it on, on the devil is us. Because both need permission. Lord have mercy. That was Zoom. <laughs> both need permission. God and the devil. If read the book of Revelation, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Why don't God just bust off in there? Because he'd be violating the authority placed in us. So he stands at the door and knock, and if any man will open and let him come in, then he'll sup with him. That's why God don't make people get saved. He puts a desire in them, but they have to make the decision. Same thing. The devil can't do nothing without our permission. And it's just been we have not known that even words we're saying jokingly and vainly are giving permission to certain things that happen in your life. And God been he been he's preparing me for something. So he's been he's been discipline, disciplining me. In certain areas, especially with, with my words. And you know, I've been word conscious for years. But now God even refining that now to where I become more like him. Where I only speak that what I want to happen. See, God never speaks nothing he don't want to see. Jesus never had to apologize. Jesus never said, I'm sorry. Because he never spoke nothing that wasn't already approved by God. What if you only spoke what God had given approval to? Lord have mercy. I got to come down here to talk to Diane now. What if we only spoke what God had approved us to say. Jesus said, I only say, I only speak what my father tells me to speak. I don't add lip, I don't make up nothing. I'm not trying to do my own thing. I only want to please the father. So to please the Father, I must talk like him. Glory to God. And then he told him, he said, now, now you do the same thing. You do the same work that I'm doing, which means what? You talk like I talk. When we start speaking only those things which God has approved, your conversations will be shorter. Your topics will be limited. I've said it before, I've said it again. A lot of things we, we come in on, we don't have no right to be com, com, coming on, on nothing about that. That ain't our business. You criticize somebody down the street, that ain't your business. That's their house. If, if, if they want to lay in the ditch on that prop, that's their ditch and their house. They must be a little loose up there. I don't know. <laughs> See, the Bible said, let me tell you how they did it. The word of God says, Jesus out of his mouth, written in red, says, even the vain words we're going to have given account for. Every word. I think about some of the words you've said over the. <laughs> Somebody said mercy. mercy. 
Mark eleven twenty two says, Peter was amazed when Jesus spoke to this fig tree and told the tree to his folks that I may eat of you hereafter and went on about his business. And then when they came back the next day, Peter recognized that the tree was dead. So he brought it to Jesus' attention. So Jesus here in the 22nd verse said, and Jesus answered and said, have faith, where? In God, who is what? Faithful, can't lie, right? Won't deny himself, never had a failure, right? And I've already said yes to everything that's written. Has already said yes to everything that's written. He said, this God, have faith in this God. Look what it says now in verse 23. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto what? This mountain, be thou removed, and be thou what? Cast into the sea, and shall not what? Doubt in his heart shall not become unfaithful to his having faith in God. To what? Move the mountain. Who would not become what? Unfaithful to the God that has the power to move the mountain. Doubt not. But shall believe that those things, what? Which he what? Said. Which he what? Said. Shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Now, people of God, if what you are saying is what God has said, and you faithful to him who said it, you will have what you say. Uh, let's, 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 let's put this back, 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 back in again. It's not a matter of if. It's simply when. But I remain faithful to keep saying the same thing. The same thing. Himself took my infirmities and bore my sickness by stripes. I'm here. Body, you heard me. You hear me. God has spoken. That's a wrap. Final answer. End the story. Amen. I agree. Let that be me. Thank you, Lord, that I am healed. Everything working in perfection by divine design. Himself took that for I don't have. Oh, God. Ooh, everything working. All my atoms and cells, electrons, neutrons, protons, is charged and filled to full with the power and energy and the life of God. The law of life flows in me now. The law of sin and death has been removed from me. Everything working in me now. Everything with divine health and nothing else. You make your words count. While you're talking all that other stuff, you can be making, make, making your words count towards your manifestation. Am I helping anybody up, up in here? We are going to see the end of our faith. Make your words count. If you're going to talk, talk towards your manifestation. Limit your conversations. Focus. Lock in on your miracle. It's already been granted. It has already been granted to you. It has already been granted to you. But can you be faithful to your faith long enough with joy? Paul said, in whatever state I am in, I have learned to be what? Content. I've learned how to Adjust to the moment while I'm speaking my end. I've learned how to adjust to the moment while I'm speaking my end. Make words count. Let words work for you. 
He said, you're going to have what? What you say. If you're leaving that doubt, well, to, to have what you say, say what he said. Because the, uh, the Holy Spirit performs whose words? God's words. He's the performer and the confirmer. And when he hears God's word coming out of your mouth, it's just like God is talking. Because God cannot deny himself. And God and his word are synonymous. You can't have one of the, they, they, they're both one and the same. So when you speak in God's word, you speak in God. And God is God over everything. And when you put it in your mouth, the book of uh, uh, Psalm 103, verse, verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength. It says this, who hearken to the voice of his word. Hebrews chapter 2, verse, chapter 1, verse 14 says, Are not they ministers spirits? Sent forth the minister what? For our own behalf of who? The act of salvation. The angels listen to your words. And when they hear God's word come out of your mouth in faith, they get to moving on your behalf. Amen. Amen. The word of God has never lost a battle. The problem has been Hanging in there to the end. We get weary, fatigued, and then we start complaining about, I didn't think it'd take this long. I thought I'd have been healed last year sometime. <laughs> Hello, somebody. So then, so, so then we began to what, lose hope that it's ever going to happen. Especially when you start comparing yourself to others. But everybody's journey is different. But hold fast to your profession, a confession of faith without waiting for he is faithful. That promised God will not change. His word will not change. So we will not change. We'll keep saying the what? Same thing. We'll make our words count. And when you do that, when you're not even thinking about it, manifestation shows up. I got an open right ear to prove it. Wasn't even thinking about it and didn't even dawn on until I realized, you know what? This, this amplifier is very loud and it hadn't changed none of the settings. The, amp the amplifier didn't change, my ear changed. Because I've been saying the same thing over and 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 over. And over, 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 and over. Hallelujah. I turn the TV off. It's a distraction. I turn it off. I ain't got the, most of the stuff on TV is not the word. It's gossip. It's some, somebody acting out something. I don't need no act. I need truth. So I keep truth going. Because see, the key is you got to fill all your gates. Your eye gate, your ear gate, and your mouth gate. So I solved the problem by putting it in my mouth. My ears hear it. I put it in front of me so I can see it. So my eyes see it. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my things. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life to those that find them. And what? Health to all the flesh. Proverbs 4 and 20 through verse 22. 
If I attend to the word, I'll walk in health and I'll walk in life. But the way I do it, I tend, I keep the word in my mouth. I ain't got time for other conversations. I got a dumb devil that's trying to take me out so he can shut me up, but it ain't going to happen. Because watch this. I won't give him permission. I won't say nothing but what God says so he has no legal right for, for, to do nothing because I won't change what I'm saying. I keep saying what God is saying. I keep saying what God is saying. I keep, well, say, I keep saying what God has said. I keep saying what God has said. And circumstances and situations don't affect the outcome. I keep saying the same thing. I don't care what, what circumstances do. Don't, 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 don't mean nothing. I'm not moved by that. I'm a thermostat now, for my mother. I control the circumstances. The circumstances don't control me. I'm the HNIC. Y'all, 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 y'all know what that means, don't you? <laughs> I can't blame nobody for how my life turned out but me. It's on me. I can't blame who, who I was raised by, what I, where I was raised at. It's on me. I can have what I say. Have I helped you in it today at all? Lord have mercy. Make your words count. Charlie? Ella? Mahalia? Cynthia, Cynthia, yes. make your words count. It becomes like, you, it's like E.F. Hutton. When you open your mouth, everything stands at attention in creation, waiting to hear what you got to say. And when you speak, everything goes to work to bring that to pass on your behalf. Because God has spoken. Because what? You're saying what God said. Put me in remembrance. Declare thou that you might be saying, he said, he said, decree a thing, what happened? And it shall be what? Accept. Decree it, say it. God will make it happen for you. Have faith in God. Would you stand, please? I'm just going to stop right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, people, people, God, this house is going to walk in the manifested word. This house is going to walk in the manifested word. And one thing to read about it, another thing to live it. We're going to have what we say. Enough of sitting out here. You know where you're supposed to be at. Yes, yes, I you just keep your mouth, mouth dialing on the word. Day and night. Day and night. You don't need no fleece to see if it's working or not. God has spoken. That's all you need. He said so. The Spirit of God in you is the confirmation. The Holy Ghost in your belly. He's the confirmer and the performer. He's the confirmer and the performer of every word God ever spoke. You, got, you already got enough witness. Stay on the word. They are creating a position for you on a job. Because you won't back off of Psalms 512 and Psalms 75, 6 and 7. You keep saying, promotion comes from God, not them. Promotion comes from God, not them. Promotion comes from God, not them. Promotion comes from God. 
The heart of man is in God's hand. I'm never at a disadvantage. Lord have mercy. I am never at a disadvantage. Why? Because God is for me. So since God is for me, who cares? Who's against? It doesn't matter. They can't win. I already won. Father, today, thank you for honoring us with your presence and with your word. Father, I decree that today this word is sealed in the heart of your people, O oh God. And Father, I decree that they have been encouraged, they've been enlightened, and they are committed to speak the word only, make their words count, and to commit to your word until they see it because they know you can't lie and you will not deny yourself. Satan, you will not steal this word from them. We cover this word in the blood. Seal this word, I pray, oh God, in their hearts right now. And may they be a practical applicator of the truth every day in their life. Let them see the fruit of this word they've heard immediately in their lives, oh God. Confirm it and perform it in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray now that the Holy Spirit has the freedom to help them do the word that they have heard in the name of Jesus. And to you we give all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody not born again or out of fellowship with the Lord? Or maybe you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. You need that, you need that power in your life. That, that means when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, that means... Now the Holy Ghost is spilled over on the outside of you. You just covered inside and out. Your whole life changes when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you can, you can fellowship with God spirit to spirit. That bypass your mind. So the devil got access to your head. That's why God said, God said you have to cast down all those imaginations, those thoughts that are anti the Bible or God's word. You got to, he said he's not doing it. You, you have to do that. You have to talk to yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. You got to have a conversation with yourself. You have, you, you, see, you are the H-E-N-I-C. The only one that should have any play in your life is the Holy Ghost. For as many as are led by what? The Spirit of God. They're the sons of God. Maybe you don't have a church home. <laughs> That's easy. You're in the best church on the planet. I'm going to keep saying it. Don't let numbers fool you. Don't let numbers fool you. You drive up one day and won't find a parking spot. I'm telling you. We're going to see an influx of the old and the new. They're coming back, and new ones are coming. They're going to fill this out. Mark my word. Mark my word. So if you want to be hooked up with a church that's connected up and going up, all we do here in this, in this house is live, we'd love to have you. Maybe you just need prayer. You've been challenged, you've been standing, you're believing, but you want to take advantage of the next level of anointing that's available to you. I'm here, use me. Because when I leave, I'm, I'm, I'm going home and getting my laser, boy. <laughs> so use me while you can. That's what I'm here for. When I get, when I get used, I get renewed. 
and then I get paid. Because God never used it for, for nothing. He always takes care of his servants. Always. Always. So if you're not born again, or y'all offensive with the Lord, there's not back to the Holy Spirit, you're church home, I just need prayer. In Jesus' name, come now. Anybody present, we just want to minister to you. It's, it's your time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look like y'all got it going on. Hey. Praise the Lord. It's time to give. Hallelujah. The money. See? Now see, you, that statement is biblical. Because that, 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 that statement comes out of 2 Corinthians chapter 9. That you always having all sufficiency in all things. The money just keep on coming. So you always have. That's, that, that's what you're saying. And God hears those words back in his ears. And God looks at, at your supply set up. It's getting a, uh, a little low. Let me add, add something to it. And the money just keep on coming. With your blessed self. Hallelujah. I need... Uh, uh, A scripture from the Bible. <laughs> Proverbs 3. Verse 9. Proverbs 3, verse 9. Familiar passage, but I was saying earlier about always keep God first. That's in everything. Do him first. You do him first, he'll do you first. God does what we do. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits. See, see, I said, see, even God said, I want your first. I want your first. You don't treat me like a stepchild. <laughs> treat me like an after, oh, 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 yeah, tithe. I forgot about that. No, you, 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 you don't forget about that. That's, that'd be the first thing on your mind. Off the cross. Some people get slick. Off of the cross, not the net. <laughs> Got to help the saints. Off of the cross is all your money. The government just don't trust you. They get bad first. <laughs> and you're going to put the government over God? Come on, saints. Honor God with your substance. With the first of all your increase. Then what's going to happen? Verse 10. So shall thy bonds be filled with what? Plenty. And thy presses shall burst out with new wine. New wine. Somebody said plenty. plenty. But he said you got to honor God what? First. And then you'll start having plenty. Don't honor God first and you wind up not having any. I'm just trying to say the Holy Ghost pulled this stuff out of me like that. What all rhyme, but you won't forget it. He'll see that you have plenty. If you don't, you won't have any. Hallelujah. But that shows a lot past 10%. He left you 90. You wouldn't have that if he hadn't opened the door for you to have a job or whatever. Hello. God opened that door for you. That's called being grateful. Hallelujah. You see that? Then bring it in the house.
some money I receive to pay off the money, 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 money. Just keep I receive to pay off the money, 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 money,
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to thee. The Lord that come upon you give you peace, grace, mercy, and peace of God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be multiplied unto you. Have a good afternoon, pick and beware of the DC. Don't criticize, don't complain, and don't compare. Come on. Praise God. <laughs>